Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus, a theorem that applies to interesting situations in math where problems seem intractable otherwise. There are two parts to the theorem, and we're going to look at problems that use both parts separately. These problems come from the GRE math subject test, a test that's used sometimes for applications to graduate programs in mathematics. Now you might be preparing for the exam, which is great, but even if you aren't, these problems are really good examples to see the power of using the fundamental theorem. So let's dive into the problems involving the fundamental theorem and first state what the fundamental theorem actually is before solving them. So the first fundamental theorem has to do with looking at integration with respect to a continuous function. So let's say we had a function f that's continuous everywhere and we picked a particular constant c, some random real number. Now we're going to construct a function whose value at any value x is the integral from c to x of f of t dt. So this new function, capital F, is controlling or keeping track of integration from c to another point of our original function, little f. Now the beautiful thing that the fundamental theorem tells us is that there's a relationship between capital F and little f. And that relationship is that capital F's derivative is actually little f. Or in other words, capital F prime is little f. Another way to word that is that capital F is an antiderivative for little f. So let's actually see how that plays out in a problem. The first problem, which is problem 32, asks for the derivative with respect to x of the integral from x cubed to x to the fourth of e to the t squared dt. Now, at first glance, you might think, okay, I'll find an antiderivative for this function and then evaluate at the bounds. But the problem is this function is not easy to find an antiderivative for. So instead, what we'll do is pretend we have an antiderivative and massage the fundamental theorem of calculus to be able to try to do something. So in particular, we'll create a function that picks a random constant c and evaluates the integral from c to x of f of t dt, where f of t is this function right over here. Now, if we let f of x be this function that evaluates this integral from this constant to any particular value of x, then the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that the derivative of this function f has to be this little f of x. Okay, so if we look at this part of the expression, which is the integral from x cubed to the x to the fourth, we can actually represent it in terms of f of x. Now it doesn't look like we can do it at first glance because we have this constant, but we can write this as a difference of integrals. This is the integral from c to x to the fourth of f of t dt, because f of t is this function right here minus the integral from c to x cubed of f of t dt. Okay, and now we have an expression for that, that's f of x to the fourth, meaning capital F here, minus capital F of x cubed. Okay, great. So then the question is to determine the derivative with respect to x of this expression right over here. Now here's the thing, we have a relationship between the derivative of capital F and little f. The derivative of capital F is little f, so we can plug that in directly to figure out what the derivative of capital F is as an explicit function. However, we have to be careful because we have f composed with another function, so if we take the derivative of this, it requires the use of the chain rule. If we do that, the derivative with respect to x is going to be 4x cubed f prime of x to the fourth minus 3x squared f prime of x cubed, which now we can write explicitly knowing that f prime is little f. So this is going to be f of x to the fourth minus 3x squared times f of x cubed, which we can now substitute. This is e to the x to the fourth squared, which is x to the eighth. And similarly here we'll have e x to the sixth. So I think the moral here is this looks like it's amenable to 
use by the fundamental theorem of calculus, but we need to be careful to think about the steps we're doing because hidden in here is a chain rule that we need to use when differentiating. Now the second fundamental theorem of calculus allows us to evaluate an integral against our function little f between two specific bounds. So let's say our function little f is continuous on the interval a, b. Then the integral from a to b of f of t dt can actually be evaluated using an antiderivative. So if capital F is an antiderivative, that is capital F is a function whose derivative is our function little f that we start with, then the integral from a to b of f of t dt can be written as capital F of b minus capital F of a. Let's take a look at how this is useful in solving the next problem. Okay, in this next problem, you're given a graph of the derivative of a function, and it looks something like this. So we'll just make the assumption that this derivative is continuous given the way that it's drawn. In the actual practice book, I think they uh, draw this up to three instead of four, but this diagram will just illuminate the same processes that go on in this problem. And the problem asks you to compare f of zero, f of two, and f of four. And we're gonna see how to do this using the fundamental theorem of calculus in a really nice way. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that the derivative of f is f prime. So f itself is an antiderivative for f prime. So as a consequence, the difference of any of these two values can be represented as an integral of f prime. Let's see how we can use that to actually compare values. So for example, let's take a look at f of four minus f of two. Because f is an antiderivative for f prime, by the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, f of four minus f of two is the integral from two to four of f prime of t dt. Okay, if you look at the graph of f prime between two and four, it's completely negative. So this thing here is less than or equal to zero and actually is strictly less than zero in most places. This integral actually is the area under here, which is all negative. So this thing is strictly less than zero. And so we get as a consequence that f of four minus f of two is negative, meaning that f of two is strictly greater than f of four. So I'll put a little inequality like this. Uh, okay, so one of the things you might notice is that we actually didn't really need to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to observe that f of two is strictly greater than f of four. Another way we could have done this is thought, okay, well, f prime is negative in this interval from two to four, which means that f is a decreasing function. And if f decreases, then we'll have this inequality just like we have here. However, that's a phenomenon that happens specifically between two and four. Let's compare the values f of zero and f of four to see how the fundamental theorem can be quite useful in order to determine the relationship between those two. Okay, so comparing f of four and f of zero, we have f of four minus f of zero, again by the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, is the integral from zero to four of f prime of t dt. So that's the area under this whole entire curve right here. And you notice from the picture that there's a lot more positive area than negative area. So the sum of these two, the integral at least, is gonna be a positive number from the diagram. And consequently, f of four is strictly greater than f of zero. And that might not be as clear by other means. So we do get that this thing is greater than this. And so as a consequence, we know the relationship between all three of these. So there you have it, two interesting examples that apply the first and second fundamental theorem of calculus in ways that give us insight into functions. Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications on future videos.